Hey guys, and welcome back. So in this tutorial, I'm kind of just going to be going through the code that I used in the last video, explaining what that code does, why it does that, and how we can kind of modify it to do different things. Uh, in future videos, we're going to talk more about some of the things in the threading module. There's some really cool stuff that you can do. You can set tasks to run at like a, after a certain time interval. You can see how many threads you have currently running. Uh, there's a bunch of other cool stuff, and that's what we're going to get into. Before I go too far, if you want any of the code that I write in here and you don't want to uh, copy it out. It will be on my website techwithtim.net and if you need any help feel free to join my discord server or message me on Twitter Okay, so let's get started and we're gonna just start by importing threading and importing time Okay, and what we need to do when we uh, want to create a new thread is we actually have to create a subclass of the main thread class from this threading module You guys will see what I mean in a second. So we're gonna say class name this whatever you want I'm gonna say is my thread and it's going to inherit from threading dot thread like this. Okay, we're going to create a nice uh, init method here. It's going to take self. It's going to take thread ID, which will just be some kind of integer. I'll take a name, which can be whatever the thread name is. And then finally, we will take a count. And the reason we're taking a count is because this specific thread that we're creating is going to try to count down from whatever number we give it. Right. So that's what we're going to do. So now the first thing we actually have to do whenever we create kind of a, a subclass like this of the threading class is we need to call that uh, the parents constructor method or initialization method. So we're going to, we need to call this on this. So to do that, we're just going to copy this. So threading dot thread dot underscore underscore init underscore underscore and just give it self. The reason we have to do that is because there's some low level stuff going on when we create a new thread and well, this is what's going to handle that for us. So we just call that it sets it up and then our thread is ready to go essentially. So now we're just going to um, define all of our, what do you call it? Attributes here. So we'll just say thread ID equals thread ID. We'll do self dot name equals name and self dot count equals count. Sweet. Okay. So we've done that and that's actually all we need for our initialization uh, method here. And now we can just make a new method called run. And this is what is actually going to define it. Actually, it needs to be called run, by the way, because that's how we know to start the thread. Uh, it needs to define essentially what the thread is going to do. So we're going to give it an argument of self. Do we need anything else? I don't think so. We'll just leave that as self. And in here, we're simply just going to print that we're starting the thread and then we're going to call some kind of function. And that function is going to be what the thread is essentially. And this is pretty well the way that we're going to do anything when we want to create a new thread is we're going to create a subclass of this threading. Uh, what do you call it? This main threading class. We're just going to call the constructor, uh, set a few things. These can be whatever you want, by the way, you don't have to have these ones in that I'm defining. I'm going to create a method. This does need to be called run. And this is what is going to well run when you start the thread. Okay. So in here, we're just going to say print and then we'll just say starting and we'll just put the name of the thread. So let's say plus self dot name and we're going to add a new line character. This is going to seem weird, but just just go with me here. OK, on this new line character. Next, we're going to call whatever function it is that's going to be doing something for us. So in my case, I'm just going to call my function uh, print underscore time because that's what we were doing last time. And in here, what do we need to give it? We need to give it three things and we'll define those after we're going to give thread name. So we're going to say self dot name self dot uh, okay, self dot count, which is going to be up there. And then we need to give it a delay. And the delay I think is I'm going to say is one second. Okay, so we'll do that. All right, next in here, we're going to say print, and then we're going to say exiting, and then obviously the name of the thread. So self dot name. And essentially, this is what's going to happen once this function is done running, we're going to come here. And then we're going to print this out saying that we're essentially done the thread. Okay, sweet. So that's actually it for creating a thread. Uh, now this can be changed quite a bit and it's actually really nice because it means that we can kind of give our threads their own attributes and properties and define what they are based on what kind of thread they are. So this thread, for example, is just going to call the print time function. But if we want to create different kinds of threads, we just create more classes like this and call it like my thread one, my thread two, obviously an appropriate name, but you get the point. And then in here, we can just change the function. We can maybe not print something out. We could print something different. We can give it some different attributes uh, and all that kind of stuff. Sweet. So let's now create a function and we're just going to call this one print time. So define print time. It's going to take three things, which can be a name, a delay and a count. Okay. And in here, all we're going to do is we're going to say, well, count. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do time dot sleep. 
And then here we're just going to do the delay. That's how much we're going to sleep by. And then we're going to simply print out. I'm just going to copy this in because it's kind of a long uh, string here or a long statement. We're going to just print this. So uh, percent s percent s percent s and then these are the three things we're going to use except I just need to change these to be the correct uh, name. So we're going to say name time dot c time which is going to get the current time uh, and just format that nice for us. It's a counter. This is just called count. Sweet. So we've got that. And next what we're going to do is we're going to decrement the counter. So we're going to say count minus equal one. And essentially what this is going to do is we're just going to count down from whatever number we passed in here. And once that eventually hits zero, so while count like any number will be true there unless it's zero, uh, then we'll exit out of this. We'll stop. We'll go back here. We'll exit uh, and then we'll be good to go. So that's actually almost about it for creating kind of the function and the thread. Now we just need to start our threads and uh, wait for them to kind of execute. So to do this pretty straightforward, we just need to create new threads uh, to start. So we're going to say thread one equals my thread and then here we're just going to give it uh, the three things that need so id name count so id is going to be one name is going to be simply thread one and the count we'll say is like 10 okay next so we're going to say thread two is equal to my thread and then here we're going to give it id two we're going to call it well thread two and we're going to give it a count of five okay and i should probably call spell thread correctly that would be good Okay, so we've actually just created these threads now, um, but if we want to actually run them and have them like working for us, well, we need to do that. So to do that is pretty straightforward. All we're going to do is just say thread one dot start and then directly underneath that we'll do thread two dot start as well. And what this is going to do is it's going to start running the threads and it's kind of going to do exactly what um, we showed in the last video, how they run through. And we'll show that again. Now, the last thing that we need to do is we need to do thread one dot join and thread two dot join. Now the reason we need this is because if we don't have this, um, it's not gonna, we could run into some issues where the thread is gonna exit or like there's just something goes wrong with the thread. Um, so essentially these, we'll talk about them more in later videos. It's just, we're waiting for the thread to finish executing before we um, terminate the program. I think that's the easiest way to do it. And now what I'm gonna do at the end is I'm just gonna say print uh, done main thread because well, like, what we're doing here, right, is we're creating two threads. But the thing is, our program's already running in one thread, which is known as the main thread. So we're actually going to have three threads now in our program. So we have the main thread, and we have two that we've created that are running based on what's said in the main thread. It's, it's kind of weird, but that's like, we have three threads essentially for our program because we have the main one. So once these two threads are done doing their kind of thing, then we'll, we'll finish the main thread uh, because the program is done executing. So we'll just print that and say that we're done. Okay, so I don't think that I made any uh, mistakes here. I'm just having a quick look through my other thing to make sure I don't uh, run into any errors. Yeah, okay, so that should be all right. So let's now actually just run this and see what we're getting. Okay, starting thread one, thread two, thread one, thread two, thread one, thread two. So this is a little bit different than the one I did last time, uh, but I think it's actually a pretty decent example and we'll go through in a second. Sweet. So um, this worked really well, surprisingly that I didn't make any mistakes. So obviously thread one starts at 10, it's trying to count down to zero, thread two starts at five, and they're just gonna alternate back and forth because they each delay one second in the little loop. So when one's delaying, the other one can run. When the other one's delaying, the next one can run. Now, if you don't want these little blank lines in between them, I think it makes it easier to read. Then you can just remove that, um, what do you call it, new line character at the end, but I just like it because it makes it easier to read. So we get seven, two, six, one, Obviously now thread two is done, so we exit thread two, and then we go uh, and just keep executing thread one until eventually we get to zero, and then we exit it, and then we're done. So that essentially is uh, the code we wrote in the last video. If you guys want to modify this and play with it, try changing what this function does. Uh, maybe don't just print the timeout. Maybe do something else. Maybe count some other numbers, or maybe multiply. I don't know. Do your own thing. Just mess around with it. Don't be afraid if it's not going to work because the only way you really do learn these kind of things well is just to mess around with them and play with them yourself. Um, that's at least what I've been doing to kind of figure out threading uh, before I taught it to you guys. Again, you can mess with this delay. You can make it a variable. You can change it. Um, maybe in here you want to add another attribute that's delay so that you don't have to have like a hard coded one second delay. Uh, and yeah, maybe create three threads, four threads, whatever. So if we want to create another one that was different than this and did its own kind of task, like maybe it counted up. Well, then essentially all we would do is just copy this class and paste it here. 
and then instead of having uh, it call print time, it just call a different function, or it could even just have like its own while loop in here, right? Because all essentially this function does is has a while loop. Um, it's just so we can use it twice, but I mean like you can put your own while loop in here as well and do something like that. So anyways, that has kind of been it for this tutorial. The next one, we're going to get into some more cool things in the threading module, counting threads, starting them after a certain time, doing some more practical examples. Uh, and with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video. Oh, 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 oh,